Well, Israel, welcome back. Um, Thank you. Back to Sydney, back to Australia. Um, mm -hmm. And this time you didn't come alone. You actually, it sounds like you brought Sean Strickland with you to Sydney because it sounds like without you, this fight would not be happening here. Is that correct? You are 100% correct. I got him his first passport. I um, got him his first flight out of his country. Um, I got him his big money fight. So uh, he should be really grateful after this. He should be really grateful um, for the opportunity. I mean, this, this is sincere. He should really... Because he's talking all this shit, and it's whatever. But like, he should really be grateful, because I'm changing his life for the better. He, uh, he was just in here talking to us. Um, Ooh, fill me in. Uh, you can sort of imagine it. He did say thank you. But, uh, oh, you did? Yeah, he said thanks. Oh, that's cool. Oh, look at that. You teach him nice. You teach him nice things. I can't guarantee he was being sincere, but he did say it. I'll take it. Um, he's obviously not really cutting a very serious figure you know he's not coming in here like oh, i'm ready to get the job done he's coming here he's cracking jokes do you think that's sort of an example of how he's really feeling about the fight or is that just how he's trying to push the nerves off until the end of the week hmm. i think that makes him really dangerous i think that's uh that's that that's what makes him dangerous he, he doesn't care he he knows i'm gonna beat him so he doesn't care and he's gonna try and do his best to beat me by any means necessary. Um, I've been there before, even my last fight. I knew I could beat this guy. I was like, I can fucking beat this guy. I almost beat him every fucking time. And I beat him the first time, but I know I can beat this guy. And then, you know, he ended up beating me. But I was just like, okay, everyone's counting me out. I'm, I'm the underdog. So I was like, right, bet. I'm going to use this and I don't care. I'm going to give everything to this fight. And that makes you a dangerous man. A man with nothing to lose and everything to gain is a dangerous man. He, uh, he admits that before the prayer fight, he should have wrestled, he should have gone in there, and then he didn't, right? He goes in there and he wants to prove a point. He said ahead of your fight, he's, I've been wrestling, I've been wrestling, but sometimes you go in there and it goes out of his head. Do you think he'll have an ego about his own stand-up that when this guy who's supposedly superior, he'll have to match you, or will he shoot for the legs? I mean, he did say he's a better striker than me, so I welcome him to try. But... Um, I, I think his team is too smart, you know. Um, you know, he's got, he trains at Extreme Couture. He's got Eric, um, Ray Sefo and them on his team. So he, if he listens to his coaches, this is different. This is not just a regular fight that his ego is going to take in place. He wants this. I know he wants that. He, he tries to push it away, like you say, just to like, I guess, well, I don't how do, how do you do it? What do you call it? Like, just like to relieve yourself of the pressure, if you will. But um, I think he's going to wrestle. I think he's going to wrestle. And I got something for his ass because me and my buddy Craig Jones be hanging out a lot. A lot. So, yeah, we've been around the world. We've been training. And um, I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm yet to, you know, choke a motherfucker out. So that's, that's one thing that's on my list. And I hope he wrestles. If not, Cool, stand and bang, do the man dance as you will. He's selling wolf tickets when he, when he talks about that, by the way. It's just, I don't think he's going to man dance with me. Uh, and if he does, I'm a better dancer than him. He talks like, uh, you know, oh, I want to kill and, and, and all this sort of hyper aggressive stuff. But do you believe. When Cap. You, when you look at, the, there you go, when you look at the other guys you fought, is he this really tough guy that can get in there and have a war and see you through to the end? Or is it just these are all words that just disappear when he steps in the cage? He, he looks good against guys who are human punching bags. Roll back the tape, UFC 253. I said the same thing about Paulo Costa. And this is not my ego talking. This is just me speaking strictly facts. I said, Paulo looks good against guys who are human punching bags. Look at um, fucking Deshaun's last fight. He fought the bus and he was a fucking human punching bag. Just stood there and got beat the fuck up. And I told you guys, Paulo will not catch me. I will catch him eventually. And I told him I was knocking the fuck out. And I did. Um, again, this is not my ego talking. This is me speaking facts. Sean fights guys and looks good against them because they let him look good against them. And they let him get in their head. Um, but again, I've, <laughs> I've done this how many times? This is deja vu. This is deja vu to me. Like All this shit's semi-fun. But what I really want to do is just fight. I really want to fight and showcase. And also watch my team showcase as well before me. And... Yeah, all that's cap. You have one chance to make a first impression, and he already failed that when I tapped him on the ass. You all saw the receipts, right? I wasn't trying to be a dick. I was just saying hello. 
Then he gets on stage and starts talking shit. I'm gonna come down there and you're out fight. You could get my number. And I, I'm like, <laughs> three minutes ago, you were. <laughs> and then after that backstage, he just whoop, beelines away from me. And I was just like, all right, cap. And anytime he tries to act tough now in front of people, it just it doesn't have the same sting at all because uh, you know you know when danger is real, fear is in the mind. Like I can't where did I hear that from? I can't remember what quote I hear that from, but like it's all it's in, it's in, it's in his his head. He tries to act like a tough guy. He's a tough guy. He's he's a good fighter. He's a good pressure fighter. All that against human punching bags, but there's no danger with him. Last time I saw him in Vegas, I smacked him in the dick because I knew it wasn't dangerous to me. And then he tried to push me. Said, "Don't touch me, bro." I was like, huh, and I just jumped over my seat, and I just kept on watching my fights. Right. Last one for me. Uh, I think everyone sort of, we've, we spoke about it, you know, oh, the press conference is going to be great, but the fight's going to be whatever. So people are kind of assuming you're walking in there and going through this guy pretty easily. Does that add pressure to you, or I does don't. that just make you think, this is going to be fun? No, nah, I don't even think about it. I like to, I don't listen to those voices. I hear people say, the odds of this, the that, I'm putting my parlay on you. Bro, fuck your parlay. I put my life on this shit. So, yeah, uh, I don't listen to those those voices. I look at myself as the underdog in this fight. I don't even know where my belt is at. Like, I don't, like, this is not even my belt. I don't give a fuck. I just want to beat people up, make lots of money, beat people up in different styles till I retire. And then I'll look back and be like, fuck, I was the man. Well, I'm the man. But, um, yeah, in the meantime, Sean's next. I focus on him. And I don't take him lightly. I don't underestimate him, but I don't overestimate him. And he's a dangerous guy, but I have a habit of making dangerous guys look easy. Israel, um, I, I think Will Smith said that quote, by the way. Oh, is that movie with his son? Yeah. That's right, yeah. For, Fear's for, in the mind, danger is real. Yeah, it's just, it's, he's, he's a dangerous guy if you let him be. But I'm not stupid. <laughs> And I'm curious, uh, do you do you dislike Sean at all? Because he, he's bringing no. up like the Chinese flag, questioning your manhood and everything. He brings it up quite often. Chinese thing, I don't give a fuck. I actually, I've traveled around the world. <laughs> I've worked around the world. I've fought around the world. I've acted around the world. Um, I've never even addressed it because, look, if I, I if I gave a fuck, I'd address it. I'd tell you why exactly that clip or what it was. But I really don't give a fuck. I've been working around the world and making bags. Um, only thing he said was one clip someone sent to me and he's questioning my morals and like, yeah. s- like saying something. And I was like, you've never even had a conversation with me and you're questioning. So that one is one I'm, I just, I'm doing a Michael Jordan and I'm taking that one personally so I can use that against him. But um, everything else, I don't care. Okay, anime. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, fuck. Like his insults are like, he's that fucking... That's, that, that idiot in the back of the class that just talks over you and talks loud just to get his point across. And again, last time he ambushed me because I wasn't expecting that. And I told him, focus on your opponent because you're going to get knocked the fuck out. And what happened? He got knocked the fuck out. You also said that you envision a spectacular finish in, in this. You want to kind of put the exclamation point on the city kickboxing lineup on this card. So when you say spectacular, what is that? Is that a knockout? Is it your first submission in the UFC? Is it just is it a back and forth fight? There's a few options. There's always like a, when you visualize these things, there's a few options, there's a few timelines. This could just go, but um, yeah, there's a few of them. But there's three main ones that I, I really I'm honing on, but I can't I can't tell you guys just because they're mine. But I guarantee you, I'll finish this guy. And last one for me. I know you've done a lot of Q and A's about your documentary that just came out. So how, what's the reception been about for the movie? It's been dope. I think Sean should watch it. He might learn something. To be honest, uh, <laughs> like. I've even said when I did the Q and A um, on Monday, when people watch my doco, I said like, "Look, this the main thing that style bended the documentary. By the way, coming soon, Australia, New Zealand, September twenty eighth. After that, soon to streaming platforms." Um, I said to people, "I was like, I don't. What I want people to get from that documentary is like, I'm not saying be like me. I'm just saying be like you." Be authentically you and don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks. Whether it, like I'm not saying look at me and you know dress the way I dress or paint your nails or fight. I'll just say look at man that guy Styles is just like unapologetically himself and he's just showing he's just bearing his chest to the world, showing his heart to the world, his heart on his sleeve and doesn't care whether you like it or not. He's just happy. So for me, I'm really happy. This so far is the best year of my life yet because I've really just embraced me 
and not giving a fuck what anyone else says. It always helps that I can kick ass because I'm just like, what the fuck are you going to tell me shit? Like, but yeah, um, even without that, I'm just saying like, fucking just be you, bro. So that what I want people to get from the documentary is just like express yourself authentically. And I will say this, I respect that from Sean. I respect the fact that he expresses himself authentically and does not give a fuck what anyone thinks. I, will, I, I, will, I respect that. He looks at me and get, he gets away. Oh, da, 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 da. But again, I don't care. That says more about him than it does about me because I am expressing myself authentically. And I'll beat your ass, Sean. I will beat your ass. Uh, Israel, you posted uh, some footage of Sean sparring and you seem you know, kind of disgusted by it, I guess maybe for a lack of a better uh, word. Um, what do you just make of like, that etiquette? I call that gym heroes. When he sparred Pereira, did he spar like that? Didn't look like it. Exactly, because he knows Pereira will fucking knock him out. Um, it's called respect. And um, I have teammates, and we can push, but I don't try and hurt my teammates. Like, he's knocking people out in the gym. Accidentally, I've probably knocked two people out over the last how many years I've been fighting in the gym accidentally. And, you know, it's not even knocked out. Like, dropped them because it was light. But, like, you know, it's just I don't try and hurt people. I don't, I don't know. There's many ways to skin a cat. Look, whatever you, works for you works for you. But I just feel like I've seen too many of those now where I'm just like, Whoa. Jim Hero. And then when he got his arm thing, oh, come on, man. Oh, come on, man. Why'd you do that, man? When he got a taste of his own medicine. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Don't fucking, don't touch me, man. Like, I do a real good impression of him. I just realized. <laughs> fucking hell. But um, yeah, he, uh, I just don't like Jim Heroes, man. Like, like I said, when he spot Pereira, he didn't bring that energy because he knew Pereira would sleep the fuck out of him. Um, Dana White's Contender Series just wrapped up a few minutes ago, and Dana did a scrum after, and he was asked about who could be next for this. And he basically said about Drickus Duplessis, you know I don't like when guys turn down fights, and was kind of like nonchalant about it. Um, Neither do I. Yeah, do you think he'll be next? I know Jared Cannonier is here in the backup position as well, and yeah. they've been kind to people who do that solid for them. So what do you think they're going to do? I don't know. You have to ask Dana. But, um, yeah, Drickus doesn't know how to play the game. Look, you can't sit on your fucking, is it ranking or whatever, and think you got, you got it locked in. This is the UFC. <laughs> if you look back at the history of the UFC, shit happens, you know? Um, so he thought he was sitting pretty, but he might have to fight two more times before I get a shot at this. But he doesn't call the shots. I do. I need you to understand that. I call the shots. You don't call the shot, dickless. You need to understand this. You can sit pretty wherever you want, but if I decide to, I might give it to whoever wins between Costa and Kamzat, not you. But um, Jared's here, backup. I didn't even know it was a backup till yesterday. I saw him, I was like, what are you doing here? <laughs> Actual, I was like, and I heard, he told me it was the backup. I was like, oh shit, shows how much I know. I don't really follow MMA news that much anymore, but like, yeah, it's, you, when I had the shot at, Silva and, and Gaslam, I, I had other things planned. You know, I was hurt, the Gaslam fight. That's why I didn't finish that triangle, because my ankle was fucked. So I had it locked on the ankle in the fifth round, that triangle. I had it locked on the ankle that was fucked, and I was like, fuck, I can't, I can't cinch it. So I'm going to use the sweep him. So I used to sweep him and get him up. But guess what? I, that camp, I did that camp with a fucked up ankle. Uh, there's many times I could have pulled out, but I've still never pulled out of a fight, even though my pullout game's strong. I still have never pulled out of a fight, ever. And I stand on that. Uh, you are the cover athlete for the deluxe edition of the UFC game two times now. Uh, what does that kind of mean to you? It's awesome. Um, I play the game. It's, it's better than the last one. Um, like the fluidity, the buttons have changed a little bit. I don't want to give too much away, but it's, uh, it's, it's good. It, it's, it's really good. And there's some, some surprises, some surprises you guys would really like in this game. Um, and yeah, it's cool. I don't know if anyone has done it twice. Has anyone done it twice? Connor Wynn. Ah, okay, similar, sweet. So, like, yeah, um, it's cool to be on that same, you know, echelon of a guy who's done it twice as well. And, yeah, I, it's cool. I look forward to playing the, the proper game, not the uh, beta or the preloaded version. Yeah, and just last one for me. Um, when we talked to you in Perth, you know, earlier this year, we asked you a little about Francis Ngannou and kind of his upcoming prospects, and you were very, you know, confident that things were going to pan out for him. Now he's very close to having a fight with Tyson Fury. It's around the corner. Uh, what do you? I just, just how proud are you of you know your brother to pull all this off? When, when I got when I when I saw it on Instagram, first thing I did was WhatsApp him. I was like, I'm gonna be there to witness history. First thing I texted him was, I'm gonna be there to witness history. I already booked my flight. As soon as it was mentioned that the fight was happening, 
I text, I was like, we're going. And a week later, they already invited me. The sheikhs in Saudi Arabia invited me to come through. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to be there. So I told y'all, don't believe the hype. Don't listen to the, the bullshit when people are trying to like, you know, oh, we are withdrawing from the bidding or whatever. Because like, you guys only see what happens for you to see. You don't know what happens behind the scenes, behind the curtains. And yeah, I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. He's, uh, he's leading the charge, put it that way. And again, Rome wasn't built in a day trust but he's leading the charge and i can't wait to see him make history that's gonna be that's yeah and it's a long shot from people what they say this and that right 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 but this man fears nothing if you if you if you listen to a story on what he's been through like before the ufc he's 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 fortified he's up here he's locked in he's a guy that you can't you can't shake him you can't break him look at him just look at them, man. I'm fucking proud of him, man. So, yeah, shout out to my big bro, Francis. And I can't wait to watch him make history again. Uh, Israel, just over here. Congrats again on the movie, man. Uh, you gave a lot of fascinating insights into your life. And you spoke to Aaron Bronstead of TSN about, like, how Sean reminds you of guys from your past, right? Mm. And I wonder, like, there's probably times in your life where people like that, you weren't able to do something about it in the moment, right? Even though you wanted to. I wonder how like things, how your mentality is now and how it changes versus the younger you compared to now when, when you actually are able to do something about it. Do you still have that same desire? Yeah, I mean, I did it to Costa. I said the same thing. I was like, it reminds me of idiots I had to deal with growing up. Um, but then now I'm capable. And I've said this. I'm, <laughs> they're no good or bad people. People are just capable of great good or great evil. Like people try to act like they're virtuous, but they don't really have a leg to stand on because they're not dangerous. I am now a dangerous man, and I can choose to be a dangerous man, or I can choose to be soft-hearted and kind. And I'm mostly, in my life, soft-hearted and kind until people start to fuck with me. Then I'm like, right, I'm about to beat the fuck out of you. I'm about to bully you. So I have to become what I hate, but I use my powers for good instead of evil. And yeah, not saying I'm fucking a saint. You guys already know. I've told you guys since the jump, I'm not your fucking saint. I'm not your hero. I'm not your guru. But I'm just me. And if you fuck with it, you fuck with it. If you don't, you don't. Guys like Sean, yeah, I've dealt with them all my life. But again, it's nothing new to me. Now I, I get the chance to beat the fuck out of him. That's, that's the difference. And I'll do it again Sunday afternoon. Has that helped you let go of some of those things from your childhood? Like the, oh, the, the fact that now you yeah. have the power to do something about that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, um, it doesn't, I don't hold on to those things. They, they definitely shape you. You know, they definitely shape you. Like, growing up, it's all trauma, you know? It's, it's all stuff that, because some of the stuff I had to endure, it's all trauma. And even I've seen, I've seen some stuff. <laughs> oh, fuck. I found out yesterday, Cunt was a neo-Nazi or some shit. Yeah, I had no idea. I, I didn't look. This is, shows you how much I look into it. I had no fucking idea. Breaking news. But, like, yeah, I, I'm not, it's not something I'm going to hop on about because it's stuff that he had to go through and the stuff that he hasn't worked on that's, still in him. The thing is, difference is I've done the work on myself to overcome those traumas and to learn how to use it to better myself, if you will. And, you know, I'm a human being. Of course, I've been insecure in certain times of my life. So when, you, when you've done the work on yourself over and over and over and over and over again, when you see it in other people, you're like, oh, I know where that's coming from. So that's why when I say Sean's insecure, I can see it because I see what he's like in front of the cameras and I see what he's like backstage. And when it's just me and him, and I'm just like, okay, I know where this is from, and I know how to deal with this. So I'll, I'll take him through a session, a nice therapy session for free. Just on therapy, like some of the most fascinating points in your movie is like mm. you with the uh, the possibility manager, mm. just talking things out. Mm. And there's, without giving away, like she she presents you with certain options. At any point were you conflicted by like, okay, I could go in this direction for like maybe inner peace or growth as a person, mm. but that would conflict with say this direction where, you know, me as the entertainer, me for my career, you know what I mean? It still happens, still to this day. And that's why I haven't been to the jungle to do the, the plant medicines because I don't want to... It'll come to me. When, when, when it comes, it comes. When it, when it calls me and it happens, it happens. But right now, I've, I've just kind of like been a little bit hesitant because I just don't want to... I've used the example of Zuko as a firebender when he realized he's friends with Aang and he can't firebend anymore. Sean didn't know about this. So, like, yeah, he couldn't fire Ben anymore. And he's just like, what happened to my powers? And it's because he became friends with Hang, so he, he had no 
anger to bend from. So, yeah. Uh, who knows, man? Who knows? Um, right now, nah, I like the chips and the dips on my shoulder. It served me well. And I'm using it in a different, in a different manner. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not jaded. I'm not like... I've seen videos of this kind of traffic, like arguing with people and filming it, talking about, like, I'll get my gun out. Like, I can't remember the last time I had road rage. I used to back in the day when I was working a nine to five, trying to get to work because I'm late and just fucking da, 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 beep, beep, beep. But now, do you want to cut in front of me? Cut in front of me. You probably need this win more than me. Your life sucks because sometimes it just, it'd be like that. But um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, me now, I just, I'm literally, like I guess I'm happy. That's, that's the main thing. I'm happy. Life isn't always fucking rainbows and gold and unicorns and roses and shit. I go through shit as well, but I deal with it different. That's the difference. I deal with it a lot different. And I bet you he goes through shit as well, but he doesn't deal with it the way I do. He just bottles it down, holds it in, and lets it build up, and who knows what he does with it. It's not my business. I focus on me. Just last one for me also. Uh, you spoke about how, like, you don't need the belt, so to speak. It doesn't define who you are, which is a healthy attitude to have. There's this big things in life. I just wonder, when did you reach that realization? And do you feel like you needed to get the belt first before you could sort of come to that realization? I had a feeling because of things that maybe Rashad has said in the past, Rashad Evans uh, and some other people. But I was like, yeah, let me see. So when I got it, it was awesome. Um, defended it, UFC 243. It's cool. Um, and I think shortly after that, I kind of like maybe the Romero or Costa fight. I just didn't really, I was like, like you'd never see me parade around with this thing unless at the after party and I'm drunk and I'm just, I'm the man. So it's whatever. But like, I don't, I don't care. It looks good. That's what it looks good. Brings notoriety, more money, all that. But like, even after I lost the belt, I told you, they were still calling me champ in the streets. They still call me champ. And people were still trying to get at me because fuck the belt, I'm Israel Adesanya. That name holds more weight than the belt. That name holds more weight than the belt. So yeah, I got the belt back. Whoop I, I really, I, I'm sure Eugene knows where it is. It's probably at his house under his bed or something. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> but like, yeah, it's, it is what it is. And I don't, it's a healthy attitude to have, but don't get me wrong, gold looks good on black skin and I love rocking that gold. So it's gonna stay with me for a while. Thanks, yeah. man. After the Pereira fight, John Anik called you the greatest middleweight of all time. Where do you think you rank in that discussion? I don't. I don't think about it. I, I, like I said, I don't think about these things. I don't chase these numbers. They chase me. I just stay present. I stay focused. I stay, stay ready. That's why I fight so often. But, um, yeah, I just make sure I get my job done. That's the main thing. And then, like I said, I look back and I'm like, holy shit, like, I've come so far. Oh my! Oh, I, apparently it's my eleventh title fight. I had no idea in five years. <clears throat> Excuse me. All these numbers people tell me about, and they said I knocked out four of the six top guys in the rankings or whatever. I'm like, did I? I can't even tell you who. But um, yeah, I don't. It just happens. I just, I just keep doing me. And in saying that, so if you're not <clears throat> chasing to be the greatest all time, and as you said being a champion isn't as important to you now. What are you chasing? I was chasing that. I was chasing the greatest of all time. This and, that. and I still think I'm one of the greatest of all time. I put Alexander Volkanovsky as the greatest of all time in my eyes because I see the work he does and he's my buddy and I love the way he fights. He's one of my favorite fighters in history. But I've never looked at like, you know, when have I ever given a fuck about the rankings? You guys, if you know your history and you know how I talk, I don't give a fuck, but I know I'm the best. I know I'm the best, and I'm not done yet. I'm still going. So I know when it's all said and done, I'll be the best. And this is art. This is like the whole Michael Jordan versus LeBron argument. I saw my boy, shout out to Kazim. He put an Instagram video I saw up today where he's like, enough with the debate. Like, when have you ever changed someone's mind when you have that debate about LeBron versus Michael? Never. You know why? Because it's art. And art is subjective. I don't need you to think the way I think. You can think fucking uh, Kobe's the greatest of all time. You can think Magic Johnson's the greatest of all time, you know? And even with rapper, Biggie or Tupac, who's your top five? People, are, it's like this fucking, they just, I don't know, Biggie and Tupac aren't my, even my top five rappers, to be honest. But that's art, because I didn't grow up in that, I did grow up in the era, but I wasn't really tapped into them till 
after they they left. And I love their music, don't get me wrong, but they're not even in my top five because I got I grew up in this era and I have other guys who are my top five. And that's art. It's subjective. You can think whatever you want. You don't have to think like the way everyone else wants you to think and say what everyone else wants you to say. Just say what you want. No one even thinks about what, why they think the things they do. I question myself all the time. If I have a feeling of like maybe even jealousy or envy or I'm angry or I'm sad about something, I'm like, well, where's that coming from? This is the work I've done. If you watch the movie Stylebender, 28th September, and also streaming platforms shortly after, you'll see like I've done the work on myself and I'm like, where, did I, where, did I, where does that come from? Where's that emotion come from? And then when I identify the monster, then I kill it. And then I made a move on in my life. And then sometimes in my rear's ugly head again, and I'm like, oh, it's about to come out. Squash. Because I can sense it's coming. So, yeah, I'm not perfect, bro. I'm fucking, I'm human. I'm a piece of shit sometimes. But also, I'm the man sometimes, a lot of the times. And that's just the dichotomy of being a human animal. And people can't express that. People, especially on the online, you dumb fucks can't even understand because you just project your own shit onto me. And you think I'll react the same way you'd react. Example, the loss. When I had it in New York, people were like, oh, he's going to be fucking under a rock crying and cutting himself. But I was like, I'm outside. <laughs> and they did not like that. They were like, fuck, we thought this would destroy him. But nah, what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Israel, just to your left over here. Um, February of, of 2020, you spoke at the Halberg Awards um, after winning Sportsman of the Year. Um, during that speech, you mentioned that New Zealand has a culture of, of tall poppy syndrome towards its athletes. Um, you said, and I quote, understand this, if you see one of us shining, whether it be the netball team, the Black Caps, the Sailors, pump them up, embrace them, because if they win, we win. If I win, you win. Uh, do you believe since that speech three and a half years ago um, that that attitude has changed or shifted at all towards uh, yourself and, and other New Zealand sports athletes? No. I'm not going to change the world. Look, I, I never, I'm not going to be the guy to change the world. But what I will do is influence my immediate circle, or those who come into my orbit, and try and like spark a mind or a few minds that will do the same like a network of change, and within a few generations, that culture might change. But it hasn't changed. I don't think so. Oh, well, I don't, like, majorly it hasn't changed, but, like, I get a lot of support from the streets in NZ. Bro, like, when I go get my beat root in the morning, I get people like, you're the man, bro. Like, they'll toot at me, you know. Shout out to the NZ Warriors. They're about to whoop Sydney again. Or is it Sydney this weekend? The Panthers. Yeah, about to whoop them this weekend. Saws, not saws. They're my boys. But, um, yeah. They show me a lot of love. They Israel, just over here, you've spoken in the past about emulating that Son Goku spirit. At this point in your career with so many title defenses and accolades, is your focus now on just fighting the best and securing your legacy as a martial artist who fought anyone and everyone? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's pretty much it. Excellent. And look, one last question for me. As the business side of mixed martial arts grows, do you think that the purity of the martial arts is getting lost at all? Not with guys like me, no. Not with guys like Alex Volkanovsky, no. Um, yeah, this is a business, of course. We want to make some money, um, better our lives for our family and future families. But, you know, some people go overboard, cross the lines and do all that kind of stuff. But, um, huh. Nah, no, it just depends how you want to play the game, you know. Um I'm a guy who's a martial artist. I, I show respect when I go to the gym. Uh, me and my coaches, I, I show them the highest respect. You know, when I'm in there, I still bow before I leave the gym. When I enter the gym, I still bow. Um, you know, I don't think it's lost with me. And also, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy, you watch me fight. It's, it's fucking, it's art. It's beautiful. If, if that's what you like. If not, you can just say it's boring, it's dumb, it's stupid. And you can watch whoever else you want to watch. Yeah. But for me, martial arts is what I'm here for and making money. Lots and lots and lots of money. Yeah. Kill that, is he? Um, oh, in previous fights, over here, sorry. Uh, in previous fights, you've, you've noticed you've had a bit of a mantra or a motto leading in that seems to motivate you. Like in the last fight, it was do less, same, oh, say less, do more. Mm -hmm. Did you have one for this fight that to help you like, be that little flame that kept you going? Hmm. Hmm. And to second that, if you don't, does that mean you take the fight a little less seriously? Nah, not not at all. Not at all. 
Um, I def- I was going to write something in my mirror, and I was just waiting for it to come to me. But it never came, so I was like, it's okay. But I just knew, like, I've said that one plus one is two. I'm going to knock out Sean Strickland. Um, so I just, I, I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish him. I really want to just, just, I want fin- to, I'll, I'll, I don't want to knock him out, if that makes sense. But, like, it's just one plus one is two, and I'm going to knock him out. I, to be, I'd rather submit him, to be honest. I, I want to submit him. But, like, what we've worked on, and what he does, and his ego, and his brain is just a peanut. So one plus one is two. Water is wet. Sean Strickland's getting slept. Speaking of submissions, is that you mentioned on Flagrant that that's what you had planned for Rob if you had a trilogy? Um, is that something you're now more actively chasing in the cage to keep it fresh for you? Or? No, 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 I try not to chase things. Um, but Rob, that was like a that was a stipulation with myself to myself, so I can um get up for that fight because to fight him a third time I was like ugh okay well he's gonna shoot so I'm gonna have to find a way to sprawl take his back choke him out yeah that was the plan sorry Rob he just gave it away god damn it damn is he over here to your left uh you in this in this interview here you've mentioned it and your teammate Shane Young uh in here mentioned it earlier Comparing this fight to Polo, the Polo Costa fight, what is it about this fight that draws that comparison? Is it the energy? What is it? The energy, and it's just, like I said, deja vu. I said that in one of my posts this week. It just feels, it's like, again, I would make him cry like a baby, you know. Uh, it's a shameful champion. It's a shameful champ. He, uh, he um, I gonna hurt, punch him really bad. He speaks better English now. But, like, all that energy before the fight, and then I saw him at the hotel, and I checked him, I tested him, I was like, oh, you're solid. And then all that energy was gone. I was like, oh, it's all for cameras and shows, because I was right there. It's just your manager, no security. I didn't even have my guys with me back then. It was me and my manager. If he wanted to give that energy, he could have done it right there. So all these guys are fugazi. There's certain people you don't fuck with, because you know, like, it's on sight. So it just feels familiar. And I've, like, before that, before that fight, before my UFC debut, I've felt this energy before where guys try and, like, be boisterous and, like, uh, hold me back, bro, hold me back, bro. <laughs> you know, that kind of vibe. So, yeah, they don't really want to fight. They just want to act like they want to fight. And I know that energy. So it's familiar to me. And I love to fight. And, yeah, we're going to fight. Last one. Um, this week, you, uh, you've talked about you wanting to get your nails done. Do you know what you're going to do with your nails? Yeah. Drip tips, that's my favorite. Drip tips, um, because it'd be disrespectful to knock him out with these ugly things. So, yeah, I'll do my toes as well in case I kick him in the face, which I will. So, I don't know if I'm going to paint them, but I'm just going to get them, like, pretty. Because if they're not pretty, they're claws and they'll cut his face. So, nah, I'll make them pretty. Maybe put some sparkles on them. Yeah, put some sparkles on them. And again, it's uh, this is the last time I did my thing was on um, an interview. And it's the same ones. I've just kind of like taken the gel off and stuff. Like this is not, this does not define me. This is, I do this like once, maybe twice a year. But idiots want to like, that's him. He's pushing the agenda. He's this, he's that. But I'm like, you hone on one thing because you're an idiot. You have no capacity to actually broaden your mind and see things for what they are because you're an idiot and that's why you're a fucking sheep. And that's why you get told what to do and you listen to whatever the fuck they tell you because you're a fucking sheep. That's why. And yeah, I'm not the kind of person that um, you can put in a box. People have tried, but I live like there is no box. And that's why you belong in the fucking box, you sheep. Thank you very much. Easy. Any other questions? Yeah, Penina. Sorry, Vicky. Uh, Sorry. One more, one more from Penina. Um, it's Tongan Language Week in New mm. Zealand. And I was wondering if any of the, um, the Tongan guys that you train with or that you roll with have, have taught you any words or phrases? Or Way things? before that, I already knew all the bad Tongan words, and I will not say them here. But um, I'll just say, Ofatu, all my tokos. Spread love. That's what a real mob do.